<laughs> well, hello, guys and gals. Welcome back to another episode here on the Blockhead server. I believe it is episode 90. 90 of them have I made, and 90 of them have thou madest thou shalt. Old English aside, let's go ahead and check out today's project. Today's project is brought to you by Deep Slate. Today's project is going to be to work on this uh, area here with our farmers and we built some farms out there and what I just showed you what I gave you a little sneak peek of was something I've been working on for the last several hours digging out an area because I mentioned a while ago that I wanted to make some pumpkins and melon farms so over here we're gonna have the pumpkins and over here we're gonna have the melons or maybe the pumpkins are over here and the melons are over there I don't know one of those two is gonna happen because I want to finish this place up also we're gonna be building our very first auto crafter on the season. It's going to be a big, massive redstone contraption that auto crafts melons into, melon slices into melons because I do not want to deal with the melon slices. All right, we need to start things off by putting in some chests. So over here we have the chest for our carrots. Right here I think is gonna be the chest for either pumpkins or melons. I'm not sure which one's gonna go in which set of chests. But anyways, let's go ahead and put these in. Little beauties, look at this little beauty. Oh, isn't it sweet? Isn't it such a cute little chest? Okay. I'm done now. All right, now what we have to do is dig in towards the back because I want to put some hoppers on these things. Now you see this trench right here? We don't want to fall in this trench because do you see that guy right there? He's holding an iron, uh, uh, an iron sword. And if he sees me fall into this trench, he's going to attack me with that iron sword. And there's no way out of this trench besides digging out, and that's going to be very bad for my health. We have hoppers! We have hoppers! We can hop around with our hoppers. Okay, the next step here, uh, the great immutable that's mine once told me that he said, he says to me, Hex, when you're doing redstone, you gotta go backwards. And I think what he means by that is that what we need to do is build where the thing is going to go, and then backwards from that will give us the location that we need to build the output from the farm, pretty much, and then you build the farm, like, located such that that output works well. So I think that if we do this, and then, yeah, I need an axe. I, I, think I, I think I can just set this guy right here, actually. And then the, our water stream, really, really, really? I done struck it rich. Look at that, 22 gold. That's not bad. Yeah, yeah, so across up here, across this, and then it's gonna hit this chest, and then hit this wall. Is that okay to have that there? Yeah, I think it is. Hit this hit this chest, and that will align them so that the hoppers will pick them up, and they will go into the chest as appropriate. And then what I'm gonna do is create this overflow system that I was gonna make last time. I actually did overflow on carrots, and so I had a small buildup of carrots up here. Nothing, nothing like, you know, server stopping. <laughs> but it was, it was there. So, um, I think what I'm going to do is right in the middle of these two. One, two, three, four, five. Well, I got a fire going. Uh, somehow I lit myself on fire in the process. All right, so now I should be able to put this here and get this all working. I'm going to break that. There we are. And then if I just sink that into here, I should be able to put that up there. That caps it off, and this should work just fine. So, oh, there we go. Okay. That's good. And then the last one is over a piece of soul sand. And there we go. Okay, cool. So now... Am I seriously one block away from putting this in? <laughs> Okay, here comes the thing that you guys have never seen on my channel before. Here it is. It's an auto craft. Uh, what auto crafting is, is we have the carpet mod put on the server. So it allows us to do many things, but one of those things is it allows us to do auto crafting. So like if I was to put like a recipe in here for like, let's say this, you know, redstone block or like some, you know, little contraption. If I put a recipe in there, it will actually pull it out into the hopper. So there's other auto crafting mods that don't work this way. And in my opinion, uh, they probably are a little bit OP um, because this is, it's actually really difficult to make these things auto craft. 
Anyway, um, what I have to do then is I have to take a comparator signal out of this so that once the recipe is done, and the recipe in this case is just going to be nine melon slices, which is really easy. Um, being able to do ones where it actually puts in like a recipe like for something complicated like a comparator or an observer or something, or maybe, um, you know, like some stairs or something. It, it, it gets like really, really difficult and complicated to do those sorts of things. So um, basically like melon slices will come in here, melon slices will fill up this thing, and then once they completely fill that up, then what's going to happen is this comparator right here is going to fire, and then it's going to go uh, around here like that, and then um, basically then it will pull out whatever is in there. So basically what I'm trying to say is that like if I want to make a redstone block, for example, I put in these three things right here, and then I put in that one, and then as soon as I put in this one, um, because this to this hopper is locked under here, the crafting table is not going to remove this, but the once I put this in here, it's going to unlock the hopper, and instead of getting uh, nine pieces of redstone out of it, it's going to actually craft a block of redstone. And you probably saw that. So if I go down here into my chest, you're going to see a block of redstone that got crafted. So that's what it's going to do, except it's going to do that with melons. Okay, so there's that. I think what I'm going to do is run water backwards this way, up over the top of all of these builds here, and then down over here. But I don't exactly know, honestly, where that's going to be yet. Hello. Hello. Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and just work on putting in the actual farm now, and then once I get that kind of put in, um, it's going to, I'm going to go ahead and then finish off the water stream. Cause that way I know, I'll know like where it's supposed to go. All right. So we're putting in some melon farms. The way that it works is in front of each observer, there's going to be the pumpkin stem thing. And then when the pumpkin grows, the stem will actually change as a block. And then this will detect the change of the stem. Then that will push the pumpkin that grew either here or there into this water stream. Uh, there's gonna be glass in the middle so that they won't get pushed over onto this um, stuff right here. Into this water stream, the water stream will carry it into this water stream, which will go that way and then into our uh, auto crafter and storage and stuff. So that is how this thing's going to work. On the backhand side of this thing, we're gonna need some redstone for me to show you this. Okay, on the backhand side of this thing, look at my nice little lantern that I built on accident. <laughs> <laughs> on the backhand side of this thing, we're going to place a block behind the observer, which will get powered when the little stem changes its uh, direction. And then just a piece of redstone dust in between each one of these will power the piston. And voila. And then what I'm going to do is put glass in here in between these. And then I'm going to cover this like this with like um, probably something a little bit more decorative than just that. But that's the idea. And then... This is going to be a three wide pass, so we can walk through here. Just kind of watch them grow, sit there, look at the pumpkins fall, or melons. Pumpkins over there, melons over here. All right, so I got this going in here. The water stream comes this way. It's also turned me on to using scaffolding for the blocks that go on the ice so that the items will come slide underneath the scaffolding because it doesn't have a hitbox, I guess. Pretty smart dude that it's mine. Anyway, going this way and this way and this way and it does actually hit the this thing and then hit the chest gets picked up by one of these the hopper here and then um yeah by one of these two hoppers and then it should go right down into here where i'm standing currently i'm just in free camp uh where i'm gonna put some fire so that the items will uh you know be uh, destroyed that don't make it into one of these chests. That way there's an overflow protection. So I think this is going to work just fine for our collection. Now, I don't know if the fire needs to be two blocks wide, but I think it does because if items are coming along the edge here, they could just sit on the edge. The melon side of things is completely done. Very happy with it. I decided I was going to go with green glass over here because it's melons. And then over here, we're going to have orange glass for the pumpkins. That's actually told me I should do orange and green, but for completely different reasons. And then it finally struck me like, oh, if I did the green with the melons. Yeah, that would probably make sense. 
I did a little detail here on these intermediate walls. Uh, so we just have some stairs like that. Upside down stair, right side up stair. And then two wall blocks in the middle with some melons behind it like that to kind of give that off. I'm going to put melons in the floor as well. And then melon, pumpkin, melon, pumpkin, melon like that. I just need to get some, uh, I'll probably use the jack-o'-lanterns instead of like the pumpkins because it's going to look the same on the top. And that'll give us some light in here as well, which is going to be kind of cool. And then I might, 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 might do a little bit more extra detail on the floor blocks themselves. Uh, probably, but we need to focus on getting this side done. And what's interesting is that I'm actually getting a lot more pumpkins than I am melons at this point for some reason. Um, my pump, well, I guess that's not true, but my pumpkins are like two and a half stacks, and my melons are, well, I've used some of them, so two, probably and a half stacks or so. I don't know why I'm getting some going through. I think it's because I keep getting, um, there's been a couple of those, and then I dropped a couple of blocks in there. But uh, the auto crafter does seem to self correct itself and just it'll just like flush everything that's in there out. Look at this guy! <laughs> what are you doing? It is done! The pumpkin side is finished, and I did a little bit of decorating on the ceiling. It's done! <laughs> I'm really liking the way this looks. The green and the orange. <laughs> Surprisingly look really cool next to each other. I was not expecting that. The lime green, that is. Anyway, so taking a look in here, you can see... Oh, the pumpkin just uh, went through the water stream right there. You guys got to see that. These have all grown up. Looks like there's one sitting right there, but... That's kind of just the way this one, this particular type of farm works. That's not a lossless design. Why did I use this design? I don't know. I just don't like minecarts running underneath things. I just feel like they get stuck a lot, and I just didn't want to deal with that. It's working really nicely. Okay, so the design on the floor that I went with, I went with a pumpkin. I actually tried a jack-o'-lantern in here, but it was actually too bright. So I decided not to go with jack-o'-lanterns, it's just a pumpkin. And then I did uh, a stair facing it on each side, but then the ones in the middle are polished deep slate stairs. And then on the sides, it's just the stone, uh, sorry, the deep slate brick stairs like that. And I alternated, of course, between pumpkin and melon, and that looks pretty cool. On the ceiling, what I did is I just did an archway of the stone brick, uh, sorry, the deep slate brick across, and then I just did some deep slate stairs in a circle there, and then there, and then here I did deep slate stairs in a circle, but then right there you can see a polished deep slate in the middle, and that is on these ones that have this design here, and then also on these... I did put the pumpkins in behind these, uh, uh, I like that little detail even though if, if you're walking down here you wouldn't even notice it, but that's a cool, cool little detail, I like that. On this right here, I just put a couple of the polished deep slate walls right there and uh, that works pretty well. I also put that same ceiling in this little area as you walk across the little trench designed to house the zombies. On the other side here, uh, uh, for now what I did is just put in just the glass. I don't know if I'm going to do anything special on this side, but it kind of seems like I should. Well, earlier Pale invited me to go on a little bit of an expedition to get some ancient debris. So Et's mine, Pale and I went ahead and went to the nether with some TNT and hopes and dreams of finding ancient debris, and here's some of that footage. Iron ho! Don't know oh, where y'all at. Don't do it, dude. Hey, there's a couple pieces. See, if I collect the ancient debris, then that means you guys will be more... Then that means what? I have to go back and pick up all the what you missed. No, that means that you'll have to keep me alive. There's a three stack in this hole that me and Hex are in. Uh, there's a three stack right here. I need more TNT. We're in the nether. Yeah, why are you going to the end? We're in the nether. No, the end of the hole. <laughs> oh, no. Wait, uh oh. Oh, Hey, Frosty there. And Frosty? What is that? I had to drink one of my potions. 
There's a piece right there in the lava. Oh, oh somebody's got a pigman mad. Yeah. X. Ooh, I get to do it again? Oh, uh, as I much as you I want. <laughs> there we go. Oh, run away! <laughs> run away! Alright, now run toward it. Is it? You didn't want it. I always chase it so the TNT will keep going. Yeah, you got to be careful because the TNT will occasionally fly out at you. Lots and lots of ancient debris. Why does it take so long to mine it? Ooh, look, another piece. Oh, run right away! All right, so far I have 39. Nice. In this box. That is divisible by three. We each get 13 pieces. Okay, upon returning, I went ahead and smelted up a bunch of this uh, ancient debris, and we got three netherite scrap and also 21 netherite ingots. So that was pretty good. We split all of the proceeds, all of the loot, whatever, uh, three ways, which I thought was very fair. Probably more than fair. And we got quite a bit of the of the of the of the steely looking stuff. I wish this stuff was a little bit more available because there's so many cool things that you can build with it, especially like those lodestone blocks that I love. Um, it's probably my favorite block in the game is lodestone, but they are just so rare and hard to make. <laughs> it's almost not even worth making them. But uh, anyways, uh, that unfortunately is all the time we have for in this episode.